The nations of Greece and Turkey have shared a long and somewhat mixed history, alternating between periods of conflict and hostility toward each other to times of peace and understanding between the two republics. From Greece's split from the Ottoman Empire and establishing of its independence in 1832, all the way to the ongoing high tensions between the two during NATO meetings in 2020. These two seem to always have something against each other, and with such a deeply complex history it's easy to understand why. Today we'll be taking you through some of the key factors in this complicated international relationship, as well as examining which of these two nations holds the greater military superiority, and which would be more likely to come out on top if they were ever engaged in another full-on conflict. At the time of writing, Turkey and Greece are in the midst of an ongoing border crisis, with asylum seekers traveling across the Greek-Turkish border being met with violence as they attempt to flee the escalating conflict in Syria, which also shares a border with Turkey. One such instance of violence against Turkish migrants can be seen in a video released in March 2020. In this video, Greek coast guards can be seen opening fire on a rubber dinghy full of refugees off the coast of Bodrum. This comes as a result of Turkey's President Erdogan announcing he would be opening the Greek-Turkish border, which had been previously prevented under an agreement between Turkey and the EU made in 2016. That's an overview of the current situation and why there are currently once again high tensions between Greece and Turkey, which unless resolved peacefully could potentially lead to another military engagement between these two nations. So what would that look like? Well, before we take a look at that, it's important to remember that Greece and Turkey have had several wars in the past. The most recent of these took place in the aftermath of World War I, as the Ottoman Empire was partitioned. In case you were unsure, the Ottoman Empire existed between the 14th century and the early 20th and controlled large portions of West Africa, North Africa, and Southeast Europe. Between the years of 1919 and 1922, the Second Greco-Turkish War was fought and eventually resulted in a population exchange between the two nations, as well as certain lands that had previously been part of the Ottoman Empire being absorbed by the Republic of Turkey from the Kingdom of Greece, as it was known at the time. Over the course of the conflict, Turkey deployed a total of approximately 421,000 troops, whereas Greece, along with additional support from the Allied forces and volunteers from Armenia, had a strength of around 620,000. Yet the end result was still a decisive Turkish victory. Comparing that to modern figures, the Hellenic Armed Forces, that's Greece's military, composed of the Hellenic National Defense General Staff, Army, Navy, and Air Force, currently consists of approximately 105,000 active personnel as of a 2018 estimate. It's important to highlight that that's only a peacetime figure. During a period of active war, say with Turkey if the border crisis hypothetically escalates, the combined numbers of the Hellenic Army, Navy, Air Force, and National Defense General Staff could reach over 750,000 people. Overseen by the country's Ministry of National Defense, the Hellenic Armed Forces cost Greece a staggering 4.23 billion euros for the fiscal year of 2019 which is equivalent to 4.844 billion US dollars. Since 1914, Greece has operated a compulsory conscription into military service for any men over 18 years of age, for a minimum period of nine months, meaning if any conflict with Turkey was to break out, a portion of Greece's armed forces would be comprised of young men who are just old enough to drink in their native country. Meanwhile, Turkey's armed forces, much like Greece's, also consist of the combined strength of the nation's army, air force, and navy. However, in addition to these, the Gendarmerie General Command, which is a division of the Turkish government charged with upholding public order, but usually in areas or situations that fall outside of police jurisdiction similar to the role of the FBI in the US, and the Turkish Coast Guard, can during wartime become subordinate to the Army and Navy respectively, effectively making them additional reserves. Also, similarly to Greece, military service is compulsory for Turkey's male population. However, the rules there are slightly different as well as the age of conscription being 20 and 41 rather than 18. Turkey also expects any men who do not hold a four-year university degree to serve a minimum of 12 active months in the army. Those with a university degree have the option to either complete a year of service but as a military reserve or a shortened six-month tenure as an active private. At present, the Turkish armed forces are the second largest of any NATO member country, only beaten by the military force of the United States of America. As of 2015, it was estimated that the total strength of all Turkey's combined active military and paramilitary personnel totaled approximately 355,200 people, more than three times the estimated number of active personnel in Greece three years later in 2018. The numerical advantages of Turkey's active armed forces over those of Greece 
may only tell us one side of the story, however. As we previously mentioned, during wartime Greece could potentially amass a force of approximately 750,000 across the entire Hellenic armed forces, enough to oppose the estimated number Turkey currently has in active service. Though with reserves factored in, Turkey's total forces also rise to 733,900 service members. So if conflict was ever to occur between these two adjoining countries over the ongoing Greek-Turkish border crisis, both Greece and Turkey could possess almost equal military strength, and it's entirely possible that this could happen. After all, unlike the days of the Greco-Turkish War, current era warfare is far more advanced and therefore can occur almost instantaneously if the relations between both countries at NATO meetings were to break down completely. But who would be at a greater advantage? To answer that, let's examine it by land, by sea, and by air and compare Greece and Turkey's full military capabilities. Currently, with 90,000 troops in active duty during peacetime, the Hellenic army is dwarfed in size by the 260,000 strong Turkish land forces, while Greece's army could potentially see a wartime increase in size to around 500,000 members. This is only an estimate based on defense data from half a decade ago. In addition, the Turkish land forces are supported by 2,446 tanks, including 397 West German Leopard 1s and 342 Leopard 2s, 1,532 USM-60 Patton tanks, and a further 250 Turkish Altay tanks due to start production in 2023, expected to cost $2 billion. Meanwhile, there are only a total of 1,355 tanks supporting the troops of the Hellenic Army. Specifically, 170 Leopard 2A6 HELs, 183 Leopard 2A4s, 501 Leopard 1A5 GRs, 400 M48A5 MOLFs, and 101 M60A3 TTS tanks. In terms of their total quantity of troops and tanks, Turkey has the numerical advantage, along with an additional 10,139 armored fighting vehicles of various types, 872 howitzers, and 418 multiple launch rocket systems. On the other hand, the Hellenic Army is supported by, in addition to its tanks, 4,209 IFVs, that's infantry fighting vehicles, and APCs, armored personnel carriers, and 4,840 artillery. That's the strengths of Greece's and Turkey's armies and their supporting tanks and artillery. Now let's look at their navies. With the Aegean Sea situated directly between their land masses and the eastern Mediterranean shared by both countries, a naval engagement between the two is entirely possible. On this front, Greece is in possession of the 22nd largest navy in the world in terms of its number of ships. The Hellenic Navy consists of 120 warships, including 13 frigates, 11 submarines, 19 missile boats, 10 gunboats, 9 tank landing ships as well as 48 auxiliary support ships, 27 aircraft, and 7 MH-60R Seahawk helicopters bought by Greece in 2019 for 600 million US dollars. This is combined with an active personnel strength of 30,000. This figure may be comparatively smaller than Turkey's 48,600 strong navy, as reported in 2008, and their 51 maritime aircraft, but where Greece stands above their neighbors is the skill of its navy and, by extension, its Air Force fighter pilots. Ranked by NATO as some of the best in the world, one Greek pilot was even the recipient of the Top Gun Honors Award. Occasionally, Turkish jets will violate Greek airspace, and it has been reported that when Greek pilots engage them in mock dogfights, the skill level of Turkish pilots is said to have been in decline since 2016. For some added context, this was the year that after a failed military coup against him, Turkish President Erdogan was forced to arrest several members of the Turkish armed forces who were involved in the attempt to overthrow him. It would seem that the Hellenic Air Force's motto of always dominate the heights still holds true today. As of its 30,000 pilots currently active, 11,750 are career officers, meaning that these are pilots and airmen that have dedicated their lives to the service of the Air Force. The Hellenic Air Force currently has over 400 planes and helicopters at their disposal, including 230 total combat aircraft, 154 of which are US General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcons, priced at 18.8 million USD per unit. 84 of these particular planes are currently being upgraded to the more advanced F-16 Viper variants with plans for this to be completed by 2027. In addition, certain Aegean islands such as Skyros are currently being used as aircraft bases by the Hellenic Navy and Air Force, equipped with their own anti-aircraft and anti-ship weapon systems, meaning that Greece is already well defended against any attack. 
Similar to the earlier comparison of the Hellenic Army and Navy's forces, Turkey's Air Force does outmatch Greece's in numbers. But if the reports are to be believed, not in terms of the skill of its pilots. As of a 2019 estimate, the Turkish Air Force employs double the number of personnel to Greece at 60,000, with over double their number of manned aircraft at 1,067. Of these, 245 are the same F-16 Fighting Falcon variants used by the Hellenic Air Force, with an additional 49 F-4 Phantom IIs, costing roughly 2.4 million US each. So far, we've seen that the sheer difference between Greece and Turkey's combined militaries seemingly gives an advantage, at least a numerical one, to Turkey. Now let's talk about the nuclear option. Turkey is one of the five NATO countries involved in their nuclear sharing policy. In practice, this means that Turkey does not technically possess any of its own nuclear weapons, but rather shares them with other NATO member nuclear armed countries. At present, the Turkish armed forces have a total of 40 B-61 nuclear bombs housed at Incirlik Air Base in the city of Adana. And while these bombs are available for use by Turkey in the event of nuclear conflict, their use has to be approved by NATO. Being a fellow NATO member country, Greece would understandably oppose any nuclear action taken against them, as well as additionally only being in support of the use of nuclear weapons on its behalf. As the bombs are owned by the US anyway, America would never allow Turkey to use these weapons against Greece. It's also worth noting that given the close proximity of these two countries, any nuclear engagement against Greece by Turkey would likely result in Turkey itself being caught in the fallout putting its own military and civilian population at serious risk and potentially killing millions. At present, a conventional war between Greece and Turkey seems unlikely, making it difficult to know who is at an advantage. When it comes to the numbers, Turkey seems to have a stronger or at least a bigger military at its disposal. However, Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis claims that Greece is capable of winning a potential conflict. According to a member of both Greece's Institute for Defense and Security Analysis and the Mediterranean Center for Strategic Analysis and Intelligence, a conventional war is unlikely. A hybrid war, like the one we're witnessing now with the use of immigration and propaganda, is more likely to continue. Now go check out our other military comparison videos, like USA vs North Korea and India vs Pakistan, or our video on the most powerful militaries in 2020.